Hello, everybody! Roland here. Did I ever tell you that Cartrama Studios is trying to reach 200 subscribers by the end of March 2024? I'm pretty sure I didn't. Anyways, why not consider subscribing now so you won't miss any content I put out in the future? Besides, I, wouldn't, I cannot wait to see you come join the Cartrama Studios family. Anyways, on with the show! TTA's The Wrath of Womus. Was it good? Alright, before we begin this, let me give you some context real quick. Pretty much a while ago, because I had nothing better to do, I decided to binge watch all of Toy Toys Adventures' first season, which included its finale, this being... Dun Dun Dun! The Wrath of Womus! With Etsy Scott Shop! But was it good? Well, the best way I can say it is that it was meh. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't 100% garbage when I rewatched it, but it still earns the title for the weakest in terms of the current lineup of the TTA season finales. I am very upset with you, Clara. Real master, it was in my fault. You know, in the clip, Clara actually makes a point. It wasn't the special's fault that it was mid. It was actually my fault because I... I'll go ahead in a minute. I washed it, and I guess I may never forgive myself for that. And all thanks to this project being rushed, that's what makes this earn the Wasted Potential Award. How pathetic. Basically, what I mean when I say that is that if certain things that were missing from the special were actually in here, it would have actually made the special really, really good. Or at least... A rank higher than meh. Well, 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 Clara. Well, 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 I guess you really did catch the hedgehog after all. In that case, I'm not disappointed in you anymore. Yes, Wrath of Womus. I wish I wasn't disappointed with you for how much potential you wasted all because of me rushing you, but... I just have to be. Now, before we hop on to this Disappointment Express, I would like to clarify something with you guys real quick. Pretty much one of the best things you can do in order to flesh out your story is with a little thing known as origins, or I like to call backstories. Pretty much with these, you could probably explain who are the characters, what are they, and why do they act the way they act. Now, why did I mention this useless information, you may ask? Well, I noticed this. At some point during part one, Clara was explaining why she failed her mission. And she blamed Sonic for it, spoiler alert. And then when she says those things, Womus responds with this. Wait a second, that blue hedgehog, that's Sonic! Say what now? Oh, I've hated that menace since the beginning of time. You just don't understand. You're right, Womus! I don't understand! I don't understand the reason why they were able to explain why you hated Sonic so much! Yet, Part 2 was able to go out of its way to explain why Sonic was here, period! I mean, it's just baffling, to be honest, how they were able to explain that, yet they weren't able to explain why Womus hates Sonic so much! I mean, I wouldn't even care if Womus name-drops the reason why he hates Sonic so much! Just... JUST SOMETHING! Just something to explain why Wilma's hate Sonic! Just something! You were able to explain one thing, why not explain the other one too? Oh my goodness! I don't think I can deal with this anymore. Let's move on. I mean, we could. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's go and pretty much discuss another topic of the Wasted Potential Express. But this will require us to do some episode jumping, so... Now, we all remember back in episode 8, when Wilmus was practically introduced as an actual character of the series, he basically shapeshifted into the ghost engine that appeared in Thomas's ghost story from earlier in the episode. 
And while in that episode, it was presented as a cool idea for Wilma's to practically shapeshift into anything he ever wants to shapeshift into using the black steam, there was just one teeny tiny problem that the Wrath of Wilma's had with it. You want to know what it was? They never brought it up! They never brought up the fact that Wilma's could practically shapeshift. Ever. Like, period. At all. Any other words in other languages that just means at all. Like... Why? It just makes no sense! Just because of me forgetting that woman actually had shape-shifting powers, I practically took away one of two cool things I did with him, other than his deep voice! I mean, that's like if I did a cartoon with Sonic forgetting that he was actually able to run super fast! It's just so stupid! It's just so stupid, in fact, that it might as well be in line with the most stupidest things ever done in my life! I, I mean, I bet I was, after the Wrath of Wilma's was done, and I actually noticed that goof, I was like, Well, what to do, silly me! I hope I make a Zack Snyder's version of this, so I, so I can actually bring it back! Oh, silly me! That's my goof! Oh, wait a minute! You know what I just realized? I also didn't make Wilma's shapeshift in episode 9, where he actually appears after episode 8! Oh, make that a dull out, my dude! Ugh. Oh well, I mean, he barely appears in that episode anyways, I mean, so I guess it ain't, as, it ain't that bad of a problem. At least, not as bad compared to a special that literally has his name on it! What? No, no! And now, folks, the Wasted Potential Express has finally reached its final destination. The ending of this. Oh, crud. I remember, before rewatching The Wrath of Womus, that I hated this part of the special. Like, I mainly just hated for how it went down. And for those of you who have not seen The Wrath of Womus Part 3 yet, I would advise that you just turn away from the video and go watch The Wrath of Womus Part 3 for yourself, because this will contain some spoilers in it. I'll give you five seconds to do so. Done? Okay, let's do this. Basically what happens is that Harry crash lands at Woman's his castle, the two then duke it out for like 10 seconds, then Twilight shows up, then with the power of friendship, her, Timothy, and Percy were able to remove the black steam from Woman's. And that's the end, apparently! What happened to Woman's? I don't know! I'll say that for later. What happened to Sonic? Well, they did say that Yes, he's doing alright, but he still missed Tails, so, I mean, hey, at least he's doing alright. And that's still the end, though! Well, except for a little epilogue scene in which Twilight just wakes up to find wings. Oh, my very own wings! What?! Now, if Twilight in this version went through a similar character arc to the Twilight from seasons 1 to 3 of Friendship is Magic, where she just evolves from being a nerd who just loves books so much that she would rather have them over friends, to basically being a pony who accepts friendship, then the wings would have been justified. But no! That doesn't happen! She just stays her friendship-friendly state throughout the entire season, and yet 2022 with me still failed to justify it again in my chair and just say, All right, Twilight. For doing nothing and being a steady character throughout this entire season, here's your own wings! Ah! Note to self, add this to the long list of stupidest mistakes I've made in my life. And what about Womus? Well, apparently he just stayed dead from then on until the end of season 2, where pretty much this guy named Tim Swatzenberg was able to bring him back to life, though without his black steam. I have no clue how he's able to do it, but hey, at least Womus was back, right? And yes, I brought you back. You're welcome. Overall, TTA's The Wrath of Womus is alright. Isn't 100% bad, but my main gripe with it is that it just had some missed potentials. However, those gripes have been compiled to three reasons why the Wrath of Womus was mid, and pretty much why it has some missed potentials. The first reason is that 
They never explained why women hate Sonic. If they did, it probably would have fleshed out his relationship with the Blue Blur. Second, I pretty much forgot to make him shapeshift. Pretty much just by erasing Willis' power to shapeshift, I practically erased what might be the coolest thing about him other than his voice. And finally third, that rushed ending. And it might as well just have some... How do I put it? Some unnecessary parts. I'm looking at you, Twilight Gin Wings, for, for, no, for learning nothing. Straight in the eye. But I'm not saying the Wrath of Woman should be taught at film school, in which pretty much the students get taught by the teachers to never wash your projects. But most likely, I'll just keep this in reminder as a cautionary tale to what happens when you rush a project like this. You end up with something mid that pretty much major thing that's ruining it is its wasted potential.